What's going on you guys? I know I said previously in another video that I would go over the boost leaks and how to properly perform a boost leak test on the car. Well, today is that day. Unfortunately, if I wanted to show you guys how to properly do it, I, I needed to get the right tools. Now, can you go to Home Depot and get some PVC pipe like I had previously done? Theoretically, yes. Just make sure it fits and just make sure it seals up correctly. So I did go ahead and purchase this kit off of Amazon. It was literally, I think the cheapest one I could find. Uh, I think it costs about 30 to $40, right around there. It uh, wasn't anything too crazy, but it's honestly not a bad investment. You might end up spending 20, 30 bucks in PVC pipe and uh, just fittings alone. You know what I mean? I mean, look, there's four fittings here. And on average, I think four of them is like 10 bucks plus like I don't know, you might spend another $10 in fitting. So for another 10 to $15, you can get yourself an actual boost leak test kit. So, uh, so for starting off, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it if you have a factory ECU in your car with all the factory charge piping and everything. Do I have the factory charge piping? No, will I be able to point out every possible boost leak on my car? More than likely not, because I have a completely different setup than what most of you have that will be running this. However. My intake and charge piping setup is relatively the same, being that they are, um, well, there's still intake and charge piping in the factory location, let's say. There are a couple different ways that you can do this and that you could separate the charge piping from the intake piping, which I will also go over in this video to better explain to you guys um, roughly how all that works. And believe it or not, it can get a little bit more tricky than you might think. Uh, most people think, oh, it's all just intake piping. Some sees boost, some don't see boost, but then once you get to the intake manifold, um, it, it changes kind of everything in how the throttle plate is open and closed. And honestly, I think now is as good a time as ever to go over all that stuff because it took me years to figure it out. Okay, so really quickly, I've got it all set up here. I'm about to send pressure into the system, but I wanna go over which pipes actually see positive pressure and which do not. If you don't know or if you are not familiar how a boosted car works or if this is let's say this is your first turbo car i just want to go over it real quick certain pipes do see boost pressure and certain pipes will never see positive pressure and the pipes that should never see positive boost pressure are the ones that go from the air filter to the turbo so everything from here goes to the turbo will never see positive boost pressure Everything from the turbo to the intercoolers and from the intercoolers to the throttle plate will only see positive pressure when the motor is seeing positive pressure. So like your little boost gauge is what is technically being read off that. Now, there's some funny stuff that happens here with the throttle plate being open and closed. If you're not familiar, when the throttle plate is closed, there is actually no vacuum or very, very little vacuum in the charge pipes or intake pipes at all. Because technically the engine is not sucking in as much air, all the vacuum is in the intake manifold. Because the intake manifold is trying to draw a vacuum from the piping, but it can't because that throttle plate is closed. So with the throttle plate closed, everything from here onwards does not see vacuum but once that throttle plate opens up it's free game that entire motor is trying to draw in air through the intake and charge piping now a good way to think about it is once the motor sees that crossover from vacuum to positive boost pressure everything between the turbo and the throttle plate will then be under boost now basically the throttle plate acts as the restriction for the vacuum on the head. When the throttle plate is open, the restriction at that point is actually at the turbo. It all depends on whether that throttle plate is open or closed. And in doing so, that also affects the breather ports and the way the PCV functions. Because if you remember in my video about catch cans, the way the PCV functions is basically once the intake manifold is under vacuum, the PCV is working. But then once it crosses over in the positive pressure, only the breathers are providing the crankcase ventilation up. Now here's where it gets really tricky because then you move on from the charge piping to the intake manifold. And the way the intake manifold crosses over from vacuum to positive boost pressure, essentially the intake manifold is technically at zero vacuum and zero pressure when you're at wide open throttle, but no boost. So if you've got an NA car that is, let's say wide open throttle, 
you are closer to positive boost pressure or zero vacuum than any other point in that motor. As a matter of fact, the only other time that that motor is at zero vacuum is when the engine is off. Now, obviously, with the engine running and the turbo spinning and the RPMs rolling, as you get into boost, you will go out of that zero range and climb into positive boost pressure, which at that point is when the intake manifold and everything connected to it will see positive boost pressure. And one other very important thing I need to mention here. If you are still running your factory PCV or breather hoses, do not boost leak test anything more than 10 PSI. When you test with all the factory PCV and breather connections, you are also pressurizing the crankcase. So what that means is all the oil seals in the motor are also seeing that five to 10 PSI, whatever you might set it at. So ultimately what you want to avoid with that is blowing out a front or rear main seal. I can do it with my system or at least use the knowledge that I've provided in this video to test the different piping at different boost levels. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that by boosting to 15, 20 PSI is going to pressurize the oil system to that high. It's not how it works. That's what the check valve is for. But because you are pressurizing the intake tract in the way that you are with the factory breathers hooked up, the oiling system could also see 15, 20 PSI, which you want to avoid at all costs because you do not want a front or rear main seal or even cam seal blowing out of your motor when you pressure test the system. Unless you have done the proper modifications necessary to avoid pressurizing the crankcase ventilation system, um, go ahead and do it to whatever you want, but do it at your own discrepancy. I did not tell you to do that. But anyways, I got the one side off uh, for the air filters. I'm gonna plug in the other side, hook up the air hose, and we're gonna pressurize the systems. That's not going anywhere, right? That's how, that's how you're supposed to say that? Pardon the background noise, I had to uh, turn on the fan. So we got this plugged in now, nothing too crazy. Gonna slowly add in some air. There's definitely a leak in there. Oh yeah, that would explain it. Piping that turbo is not even tight. Okay, so I've already found my first leak and it's at the turbo inlet pipe. And while honestly, it's not a big deal for me because I am on speed density, meaning I'm running a map sensor, the computer doesn't calibrate for vacuum leaks before the turbo. Um, it actually doesn't even account for vacuum leaks before the intake manifolds. So let me go ahead and tighten this up and I'll get right back with you guys. So essentially there are a few different ways that you can run a boost leak test on these cars. Um, personally, because like I said, I am on speed density, I have the option to bypass all of the intake piping and go straight to just my charge piping. Now essentially, if I wanted to test just the charge piping on the car, I would probably pull off this pipe here and this pipe over here and do the same thing with those two pipes that I did for these two pipes. Now, by removing it here and here, except going this way, right? Because we want the turbo on its own. We don't want to test the turbo. We just want to test the charge piping. So, so that's what I'm probably going to end up doing just to test my charge piping on the car and my intake manifold. Now, let's say I find multiple leaks at my intake manifold and I want to separate my vacuum, my charge piping from the intake manifold. I would pretty much just remove this pipe here and this pipe here. The whole point that I'm trying to get across here basically is that if you can separate your charge piping and the way the piping in your car works, it'll make this entire boost leak test way easier and make it much more simpler to pinpoint where the leaks are coming from. Okay, so now that I'm positive, I tightened up that hose clamp over there. I'm pretty sure that was the only one. We're probably gonna blow apart yet another intake piping, but we'll see what happens here. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I found a serious boost leak here. Okay, so this is kind of stupid on my part. I'll admit, 
I should have caught this sooner, but it, it is definitely something that this is just very unfortunate. I've actually been fighting with this a little bit. If you look down in here, not sure if you can really see, look how close that coupler is to uh, my intake manifold. And if you look down in there, you'll be able to see that, uh, well, there's definitely a hole in that coupler. So we've got a leak in that coupler for sure. I'm gonna have to change that out. Um, it's just unfortunate. And honestly, should that coupler be that close to the exhaust manifold? Probably not. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that coupler out because that is definitely an issue. It is definitely leaking. I'm gonna check this side over here as well. So you can see on this side over here, it's actually got a pretty good gap. So I think we're all right over here. So it's really just that side coupler over there that I'm gonna be swapping out. And hopefully that'll take care of the major boost leaks. All right, so that is definitely not good. I mean, I'm poking my whole finger through it. So I gotta find a new coupler for this. All right, uh, new coupler, fortunately, uh, I have an extra because it, it already happened once, I'm not even gonna lie. So we're just gonna throw this one in here. I tried to clearance it a little better than the last one. Okay, so good news. I think I found an alternative route to uh, melting my silicone um, coupler. Uh, being straightforward with you guys, I'm not gonna clock the turbo right now. Don't have time for it. I really just don't feel like doing it. But instead, I do have this reflective material. I got this originally to do the transmission tunnel in the car, but I ended up skipping this and just using the stick on DEI stuff. However, as you see, I still have some left over. So I cut off a little piece of this. And as you can see, I wedged it to the back part of my silicone coupler here and I put the hose clamps around it then. So I also angled the silicone coupler out this way a little bit better, uh, just to keep it away from this piping. Theoretically, it's not touching, but um, I don't know how that's gonna work when the heat travels through that metal. It might just melt the whole silicone thing together. I don't really know. I'll probably have to clot the turbo so it's not so close to the exhaust manifold. Uh, however, as you can see, it is very close to the frame rail as well. So I got a little bit of wiggle room, but not too much. So from here, I'm just gonna throw the charge piping back on. And then once we get the charge piping back on, we can go back to boost leak testing the entire car. Okay, so let's go ahead and pressurize this system one more time. We got it on here. Just gonna go ahead and start putting in air. 25 PSI, 30 PSI. We got some funny stuff happening there, but you know what? The 30 PSI on the intake side, it's a little bit much. I'm gonna switch over to the charge piping now. And we're gonna find out if there's a leak in the charge piping at 30 PSI because honestly, Intake side, doesn't really matter for me. So now, like I said earlier in the video, I prefer to test just my charge piping. And the reason for that is, well, uh, it doesn't really matter as much when you're on speed density because the air that's getting measured for the ECU is actually tied to the intake manifold. So therefore my map sensor, your map sensor, should be tied in some way to the intake manifold of your vehicle if you are on speed density. Especially if you wanna run more than 25 PSI, Again, if you're running the factory breathers, do not run more than 10 PSI through this system. Only pressurize your charge piping more than 10 PSI if you don't have any breather systems attached to your intake manifold or charge piping. So let me go ahead and start pulling apart my charge piping, how I'm gonna test my charge piping on this car. Pipe set up here. 
Again, this is only going to test the charge piping and the intake manifold. So let's see what we got. It's 10 PSI. Yeah guys, this system's pretty well sealed up I'd say. Uh, the only leak that I'm actually hearing, well, it's currently from the valve and the Mac valves, which is normal because it's literally bleeding out of the, uh, the, the bleed ports of the Mac valve, which only close once the car starts getting into boost. So everything seems to be working really well. Okay guys, real quick, I've almost forgot one more thing I wanted to try on this entire setup here with the boost leak tester and the smoke leak tester combined. I want to pressurize the system and inject smoke into it at the same time. Not only will I be inducing pressure into the system and be hearing a noise, but it will also be inducing pressure on top of giving me a visual smoke uh, detection on the entire setup here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all set up and then we'll be able to check for smoke. Okay, so whoop, that's not good. Obviously, I got this going right now. Um, it's wanting to blow smoke everywhere, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But the problem I'm running into here is I'm trying to get it set up and test it all for you guys. Oh, just blew off again. Well guys, unfortunately this whole uh, boost leak test and smoke leak test combined just isn't going to work out. For some reason I can't get the smoke to travel all the way through the intake track. And I have a feeling it's because I have, well, pressure going in one side and then smoke trying to go in the other and well, the air pressure kind of overrides the smoke and it's not able to travel all the way through. So unfortunately that's not gonna work and maybe that's why nobody's ever done it this way before. But I figured, hey, you know what? I'll give it a shot, see what happens. And uh, there's your answer if you were cur curious as well. I just wanted to keep this video strictly as a how-to. If you're out trying to boost leak test your car or smoke leak test your car, or like I said, perhaps you have an NA and you want to smoke leak test it. You don't really need to apply boost pressure, but hey, you know what? You can do either or if you're NA, but realistically, if you're boosted, it's best to just stick with the boost leak test as you can listen to the boost leaks that are going on in the engine bay. But be sure to stick around for the next video. We are going to FL2K this weekend. So the next couple videos will probably be straight FL2K content, which believe me, you don't want to miss. It's basically TX2K, but in Florida. And if you're not familiar with what TX2K is, it's basically the fastest street cars from all over the US come to this state. I'm gonna have a special feature involved with all of that as well, maybe a few, we'll see what happens. On top of the FL2K content, we also got the Hikus content coming up for the Z. I got parts on the way, I'm still waiting on for that. So that's coming up. Uh, as well as some other special bits and parts we got planned for the Z to make it go faster. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited. I hope you guys are too. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can follow along. So stick around. We'll see you all next time. Go out beautiful cruise today. Nice, cool, fall-ish air. I don't know. It's late September. I think the air is starting to cool off a little bit for now anyways. Uh, it's probably just from all the rain that we've had, honestly, but I'm not complaining. I'm trending, ascending and blending, lyrical bending, now spreading and getting.